Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome back to Vlogmas. Hello friends! So it's the beginning of the month and it's time for my December TBR. I was kind of wanting to do a, like a Christmassy TBR this year. I wanted to get really into the spirit and read a lot of Christmas books, but I can't do that. Well, I could do that, but I <laughs> decided it's irresponsible to do that because I have a pile of library books that I haven't read. And I recently did an unhaul where I got rid of a load of my library books that I hadn't yet read. Um, and so I thought it would be most responsible <laughs> to try and finish these because I said I was going to. I will leave my unhaul up in the cards above if you would like to go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. And without further ado, we will get into the books. I'm going to start with three books that I don't have in physical copy that I'm reading this month, but I'm reading them for a good reason, so it is not taking away from my library books. The first one is Pine by Francine Toon, which is my book group pick for this month, and so I have to read it for my book group. My friend who chose this is a big fan of thrillers and creepy books, and so this was her choice, um, and it's not something I generally read, but I'm actually really excited to read this one this month. Um, the cover itself is absolutely stunning, I love this design. Lauren and her her father Niall, who live alone in the highlands in a small village surrounded by a pine forest. When a woman stumbles out onto the road one Halloween night, Niall drives her back to their house in his pickup. In the morning, she's gone. In a community where daughters rebel, men quietly rage, and drinking is a means of forgetting, mysteries like these are not out of the ordinary. The trapper found hanging with the dead animals for two weeks, locked doors and stone circles, the disappearance of Lauren's mother a decade ago. Lauren looks for answers in her tarot cards, hoping she might one day be able to read her father's turbulent mind. Neighbours know more than they let on. But when a local teenager Anne-Marie goes missing, it's no longer clear who she can trust. So this sounds like it might have some actual elements of magic in it, which I would be really excited about. If it's going to be slightly supernatural, I think that will be really, really fun. I have the audiobook of this, so I'm looking forward to listening to it because I couldn't get it from my library in time. Um, but I'm really excited because I love books set in isolated places. I have a whole video about that too, which I will leave in the cards above. Um, and so I'm excited to step out of my comfort zone a bit and try something a bit new. And I hope this one will have lots for us to discuss at book club. Then the other two that I want to listen to as audiobooks are Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman, um, which is the prequel to Practical Magic, uh, which was made into a film with Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. Um, I've heard loads of great things about the film, but not so much great things about the book. But I'm going to read this prequel um, because it's set in Salem during the witch trials, and I love books about witches and set around witch trials. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> with a baby abandoned in a snowy English field in the 1600s, under the care of gentle Hannah Owens, little Maria learns about the unnamed arts. Maria has a gift for them, a gift that may well prove her undoing. When, when Maria is abandoned by the man she loves, she invokes the curse that will haunt her family for centuries, because magic has rules and they must be followed. This is the lesson Maria will carry with her for the rest of her life and pass on to her children's children. Okay, so that actually doesn't say it's set during the Salem Witch Trials, but that's just what I'd heard, and I'd heard there were witch trials. Regardless, I love books with magic in, and books set uh, and historical fiction, and isolated books, so hopefully I will like this book too. Um, and I'm reading it for a video, which the same is true for the next book, which is which is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. So this is a book set in India in the 1950s and was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick, which I've not read any of the Reese Witherspoon book club pick books, but I suppose that's why a lot of people have picked this one up. Um, vivid and compelling in its portrait of one woman's struggle for fulfilment in a society pivoting between the traditional and the modern, The Henna Artist opens a door into a world that is at once lush and fascinating, stark and, cur and cruel. Escaping from an abusive marriage, 17-year-old Lakshmi makes her way alone to the vibrant 1950s pink city of Jaipur. There she becomes the most highly requested henna artist and confidant to the wealthy women of the upper class. But trusted with the secrets of the wealthy, she can never reveal her own. So um, that sounds really intriguing. Um, I have been to Jaipur I, and I absolutely loved it. It is an absolutely gorgeous city. Um, and so I will be really, uh, so I think it'll be really fun to read a book set there. Um, and it's had a lot of popularity. So fingers crossed, I like this one too. So now let's move on to my pile of physical books. Um, the first one on this pile is is one that's been absolutely everywhere, and that is The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This tells the story of Adi LaRue, who makes a deal with the demon that she can live forever, but no one will ever remember her. When she's tired of living, the demon will claim her soul. And she wanders into a bookshop uh, and takes something because nobody ever remembers her, and then su suddenly someone from the bookshop 
does remember her after she walks out of the room um, and so I think it's kind of a love story um, a historical fiction set over 300 years in France I believe I don't know if it stays in France the whole way and so it sounds really intriguing historical fiction with a little bit of magic is my favourite kind of genre um, so I'm definitely excited to read this uh, I don't know if I will love it because V. Schwab is not an author I've ever been drawn to before as I have said before um, and so I and it's been very very hyped um, which kind of always makes you feel a bit wary about a book not because hyped books are necessarily bad but because once you get your excitement up things can often disappoint that wouldn't if you hadn't been excited for them in the first place if that makes sense um putting too high expectations on something but it's been blurbed by Neil Gaiman and Naomi Novik um so I hopefully will love this one and it will be a new favourite. Another one that I think I really will like because I read it, the beginning of it in my Are These Books Worth My Time video, which I will leave in the cards above, is um, If I Had Your Face by Frances Char. This is another one that has had quite a lot of hype and um, an interest in it, but because I've read the beginning, I feel more confident that I will like this one. It's a book about four women living in South Korea and their interactions with beauty, uh, the beauty industry in South Korea, beauty expectations, and also with sexism, which are related to that. Um, it follows someone who becomes obsessed with a K-pop star, someone who works in a tea room, who works at a room salon, um, and it's kind of all of the, the, the intertwined lives of these four women. It reads like a very fast-paced, satirical, dark book, which is something that I also love, so I'm excited to get into this one. Another one from that Are These Books Worth My Time video that I feel like I will really like is Swimming in the Dark by Thomas Yerdowski. This has been described as Call Me By Your Name set in Soviet Poland, and it tells the story of two boys who meet at an agricultural camp in the summer one year in 1980s Poland. Uh, the agricultural camps were places that university students were sent to to do some agricultural labour and they could not graduate university without doing the labour first. Um, and these two boys meet in Poland where homosexuality is not allowed um, and so it's about their relationship, they're falling in love with one another and also how they survive when they must go back to Warsaw and their real lives and also it's about the fall of communism in Poland. Next I also want to read Till by Daniel Kellman. This is another piece of historical fiction that this year was shortlisted for the Man Booker into international prize. It was translated from the German by Ross Benjamin. This is the story of Till, a trickster character from German folklore who has in this book been transplanted into the Thirty Years War and the Bavarian court and is acting as the court jester. Um, I read the beginning of this one as well and I love the writing. It's so beautiful and dense and I love that kind of writing. Um, I also love historical fiction with folklore um, elements to it uh, and I'm really interested, intrigued into this period of history that I know nothing about, a period of history when Europe was tearing itself apart um, but I think this is going to be uh, a really good interesting read because I love learning about things I didn't know before through historical fiction. I actually think that this is going to be a very historical fiction heavy month with the exceptions of Pine and If I Had Your Face all of these books are historical fiction which since that's my favourite genre it's going to be a good month for me. So next we have The Illness Lesson by Claire Beams. This is set in the 1850s in Massachusetts and is about an experimental school set up by some men who had tried to start a utopian colony which had failed and now they start to decide to set up this school for girls um, uh, which the daughter of one of the men will be one of the teachers um, but these girls start getting sick and it is about the doctors and experiments that they perform on them and also about the disbelieving women's voices. Um, there are also these red birds that come as kind of a warning of this sickness um, so it sounds like there's going to be some magical elements and I think it's going to be quite a dark gothic novel which I'm really really excited for. Um, I've read the beginning of this as well and I loved the writing. It's quite slow and paired back with kind of an ominous overtone over the whole thing which is something that I love in books like this. And I also love books that explore the history of women and women's health in particular um, and so I think this one will be right up my street. Then we have The Book of Longings by Sue Monk Kidd, a really intriguing piece of historical fiction that was also one of my most anticipated books of the year um, and this is about the woman who marries Jesus. Um, she is a wealthy woman in Galilee in the first century um, and she meets she wants something different from her life. Anna is a rebellious young woman, a gifted writer with a curious, brilliant mind who writes secret narratives about the neglected and silent, silenced women around her. Raised in a wealthy family in Galilee, she is sheltered from the brutality of Rome's occupation of Israel. Anna is expected to marry an elderly widower to further her father's ambitions, a prospect that horrifies her. A chance encounter with the 18-year-old Jesus changes everything. His ideas and his passion are intoxicating. So I'm really intrigued by this. It's not a period of history I ever read a book about. Um, and as someone who was raised without religion, it's not any something that I know a lot about. So I'm really intrigued to see how this tackles um, Jesus and 
the revolutionary nature of his ideas um, and also the perspective of a woman in this period of history. And then finally, the final book I want to read in December is The Slaughterman's Daughter by um, Yanov Ikskovitz, uh, which is translated from the Hebrew by Or Schaff. Um, and this is a book that is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Every time I talk about it, I show you the cover. Um, and it is uh, set in the town of Motel in Ukraine, and it is about um, people who go missing. So the men have been going missing from this town for a long time, um, but people assume they've just run off um, and are having fun somewhere else. Um, but one day, a woman with children disappears, um, and that is scandalous. Um, and her sister-in-law sets off to find her. Could it have anything to do with Fanny's missing brother-in-law who left her sister almost a year ago and ran away to Minsk, abandoning his family to destitution and despair? Or could Fanny have been lured away by Zizek Brezhov, a mysterious, ferryman, a mysterious ferryman on the Yselda River who, in a strange twist of events, seems to have disappeared on the same night? Surely there can be no link between Fanny and the peculiar roadside murder on the way to Telekhani, which has left Colonel... Peter Novak, which has left Colonel Peter Novak, head of the Russian secret police, scratching his head. Surely a crime that, like that could have nothing to do with Fanny Kiesman. However, the people of Motel might mutter about her reputation as a Vilda Chaya, a wild animal. Surely not. So I think there's going to be some folklore elements to this too. I mean, just look at the cover. Um, and I'm really intrigued by this. Um, again, it's a period of history I know nothing about and it's a big chunky book, which I think will be perfect to get into when the nights draw in. <sighs> so that is it. That is all of the books I'm going to try and read this month. Fingers crossed I do a good job and get through as many of them as possible. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of those, what you thought of them um, and what you're trying to read this month. I would love to hear that from you. Please remember to like this video if you liked it and to subscribe because I put out new videos every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday and so I will see you again soon. Because I'm putting out a video every day this month and so I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Bye bye!